Alright, what's up guys? We are at 7.1.3 full exploration guide. And if act uh, if the second question was probably the worst one, this is probably one of the best ones. Um, like fun wise, this is probably one of the most fun quests they have. Um, because there's like three paths that are just straight cheese that I can think off the top of my head. So, first path, definitely the easy path. We got mesmerized, dizzy, and stun vulnerability. So Ignore these top two nodes, basically, and just parry three combo the entire goddamn quest. That's literally all I gotta do. Parry three combo. They'll never be able to evade. You got a tech charge here for Corvus. You can suicide get an evade if you want, and just take a slap to the face if you want to um, get the second charge of Corvus, but I just don't recommend it. And then you pretty much just Corvus, Archangel, literally anyone. Like, Corvus, I find the most fun because it's just stun vulnerability. So you just parry, three hit combo like you normally would with Corvus, and then you just, you know, just get crazy damage. Magneto is really good for this, Archangel, Ghost, I mean, it's really fine. Um, just use any, literally any character in the quest, any of the game can do this, just stun for a little bit. And just parry three combo, parry three combo. Um, literally not much to worry about. So, we go to this Hulkbuster. He has Hit Me I Dare You, Spiked Armor, Shockingly Brilliant, and Dulled. So... Um, you could just bring characters to like just tank him down. I found the best character is Magneto for this um, But you have to do it a certain way with Magneto. So Hulkbuster gains armor up still at the fight That's just his natural ability and every armor up reduces bleed potency and poison but What you can do is build up to a special two with Magneto throw it It'll place an armor break on him and every time you charge a heavy it'll replace the armor break So he'll never be able to gain armor basically and then once he has no armor, okay? Then you throw the special three and it one shots him. So, Magneto, number one character of this fight. You could use Corvus and just do a lot of damage. Um, who else would be good here? Um, Magneto is definitely the best. If you ever need to use him, he's an MVP. Um, Corvus is also really good for just big damage. Um, I mean, Crossbones, I guess, could one shot this fight because of crit chances dull, but he doesn't even crit. Spike armor, he doesn't even crit. Who are the characters that don't crit? Guillotine 2099, probably one of the best characters for this fight too. So yeah, just bring someone who doesn't really rely on crit damage, unless it's Corvus and it's guaranteed crit, because it has dulled, and then spiked armor. So yeah, like any character that doesn't crit, Guardian, probably really good for this too. Um, so yeah, you could just take, you could just tank the spiked armor. It really doesn't do that much damage, but yeah. It will tank you down eventually if you crit a crap ton of them. But yeah, let's look at the second path. We got Crumbling Armor, the gloves are off, Connect Transference, and Heal Block Advanced. You're going to be fully heal blocked, so if you use Suicides, you use a character that doesn't take Suicide damage like Ghost or Omega Red. Um, connect Transference, they gain power on block. Tech, uh, the gloves are off. Whenever a tech attacker removes their own armor at buff or it expires, um, or is removed by an armor break. They have a 30% chance to gain a fury buff. Um, this is just not useful. I wouldn't be too worried really about like purposely screwing your own armor for just a small fury from crumbling armor. I, I think that's just a nothing node. Basically, this whole path's a nothing node except for kinetic transference and heal block. Um, just don't bring a character that. I mean, just don't use suicides unless you have like ghost. These fights are all easy. I mean, none of these fights are really hard, except for, like, Hit Monkey. But even then, he's not that bad. So the, this whole path is just basically a nothing path. If you've played the game for a while, in your next half, it should be really easy. And then the same Hulkbuster boss, same counters, all that, yada yada. All right, now we're on path three. This path, I think, is the fun one. So we got Life Transfer and Gimme uh, and Spectre. Spectre is just kind of annoying. It just, um, every few seconds, you'll get a reversal on you. So just don't hit him while you have that. Um, this is nothing node. And then Gimme and Life Transfer. Gimme is, um, whenever the attacker regenerates health, the defender is dealt direct damage equal to 400% of the health gained. So, if you hit him for one damage, and you heal, okay, I mean, if you heal for one, he takes four damage. But the defender takes 75% less damage from all other sources, and isn't immune to damage over time, so you can't use damage over time. But with Life Transfer, it makes it OP. Life Transfer is an Act 5 node. You degenerate over time, but every one of your hits does 125% of their damage done heals you. So if you hit him for 100 damage, you get 125% of healing back. 
So you make sure you, you don't want to hit them while you have Spectre up. But once Spectre is gone, you can just perfect. You can just purposely take a few hit, go down to like a low amount of health, and then hit them, get all your health back from life transfer, and then the healing will do massive damage back. Um, it is a very very easy path. Anyone in the entire game can do it. Literally any character in the entire game, as long as their damage output isn't like complete trash. But even then, it still should be fun. Um, so yeah, not a hard fight. Just bring a counter for like this dude, and you should be fine. Um, Mojo would be scary, but you can just out heal his degen. So it's really not that scary. Now we got the Red Hulk boss. Um, blocking attacks is a 100% chance to apply a Disorient debuff, reducing their block efficiency and defensive blade accuracy by 25%. The chance is reduced by 50% flat if the block was parry. If the attacker can dash back and hold block for 1.2 seconds to remove these debuffs, not that really big a deal. Buffet, 5% of their health. Um, the defender has power focus 1, so they're going to be doing a lot of special ones. And then Foresight. Um, so if you intercept, you do 200% more damage. Ghost, best character for this. Pretty much anyone who can intercept is just doing schlong dong and damage. Um, just intercept and you'll do a lot of damage. And it's Red Hulks. And with this, he's just going to be doing a lot of special ones. Um, with the intercept node, you should be able to out-damage Buffet, too, if you're getting a lot of buffs. So it should be fun. Just don't block a lot. And you should be having a good time. So a super easy path. Um, now we got path 4. Special Connoisseur, Mutant Mastery, and Shifting Immunity. See, this one was kind of bugged for me. But we'll go over it. Shifting Immunity, every 10 seconds, they shift between Bleed Immunity and Poison Immunity. Um, immune Mastery, whenever the Immune Attacker applies a debuff to Defender, they have a 40% chance to gain an indefinite prowess buff. Increasing special attack damage by 30%. The chance increases by 20% for each debuff they have. Um, and then Special Connoisseur, this Defender takes 90% reduced damage from all sources, except special attacks activated while the special, while the Attacker has an active prowess. So, anyone who has prowess basically fucking slaps. Sunspot destroys it, and yeah, pretty much just bring Sunspot. Pretty much any mutant can do it, as long as they put debuffs. Even like parries count as debuffs, so any mutant can do it. Uh, the reason I say it's bugged is because it was really buggy with Magneto. On the beta, what you can do with Magneto is wait for them to have bleed immunity, and then you can throw a special three, and since they're bleed immune, it'll be armor breaks instead, and it'll just one shot. But I found it was really buggy, and it was not working at all, so I really don't know. Magneto's good for this, but he was not as good as I was hoping he would be. Um, it was really kind of annoying that his cheese tactic wasn't working. I felt like my special threes were not doing as much damage as they should have been. I really don't know. It was a little bit buggy, so just watch out. But there's really no hard fights on this. You just gotta use some with any mute character really can do this. And then the same Red Hulk boss we already talked about. Then we go to path five. Okay, so this one's kind of fun. So you gain a crap ton of power while you're under, under two bars of power. Uh, power shield, so you do no damage, but your special attacks do 400% more damage. And then Blaze, attackers take direct damage equal to 100% of their max damage. Or, oh, Blaze is like, um, Blaze is like that other node, what's it called? What is it called? Blaze is like Flare, but like times two. Um, so you take 100% of your health over 30 seconds, but your special attacks deal 500% more damage. So your special attacks in total do 900% more damage. And with Power 6 2, you can get to your bars power super quickly. I just used Ghost and ended the fight at a special one. Just Ghost, special one, you don't even need to get special two, it'll just destroy them, it's 900% more damage. Pretty much any character it destroys a node, especially if they have like guaranteed crit like Corvus, you have your special one or two, one shot. It's really easy, the only thing is, your characters die after 30 seconds, so don't take time. But with um, power access two, you get to your special so fast, but you will take degen in this fight, it's just inevitable. So just pick five good special characters that can just destroy on special one. Um, uh, watch out for this fight if you're using Ghost because she can put armor breaks on you, but you should be able to kill the special one before she even does that. And then this Vision Arc is boss. I didn't like it. Um, basically, it has power shield, so you do no damage except for special attacks. Um, whenever a defender activates special attack, the attacker is inflected with a heal block and an armor break debuff. So... If you don't use suicides here as my advice if you can help it um because you're gonna be um, just power lock i mean a heal lock the whole fight power reversal whenever the act attacker activates a power gain buff it is removed in place with the power drain debuff so don't bring anyone with the power buff power gain buffs and then fissure as a nothing node my strategy for this fight is bring dr doom and don't use heavies because if you use heavies you're going to take his power gains and you're going to just get power reverse 
I just used Doom, and all I did was just five hit combo, and then get to a special two, and then launch the special two. With Power Shield, it did like a half of his health bar, or like a third of it. So like two, three special three twos with Doom, and the fight's down. Um, so yeah, you could use um, Clairvoyant for this, it should be fine. But just don't bring him with the power gain, and he should be fine. And it's also a Vision Arcus, so you gotta know how to play around him if you don't. Sucks to suck. Alright, we're on path um, 6 now. Final path. Um, power snack 1. Every 7 seconds, the next buff is triggered by the attacker is immediately nullified and gives them power. So don't bring someone who relies on too many buffs. Um, every 15 seconds, if the attacker has more power, they get switched. Kind of like the last quest. Power alternator, so just don't have more power than them, I guess. And then... Backfire, and that's going to sting. So, that's going to sting. It's kind of annoying. It takes... You're taking 90% less damage unless you have a power sting on them. But, um, if you have a power sting, your attack is increased by 40%. And power stings are 300% more damage. So, they're super nice. But then, mixed with backfire, on all your science characters, if they perform a well-timed block, you can apply a power sting for 5 seconds. So, you can pretty much use any science character and then just parry and you get a power sting. So yeah, it's a super easy path, honestly, with um, the node. Um, Captain America Infinity War is really good for this um, to stop the power gain from Doctor Strange, Hyperion, Vision, um, Loki, I guess. And yeah, the power stings are just very strong. So yeah, it's a pretty easy quest to bring Captain America Infinity War. Pretty much any science character and it should be fine. And then you have this guy. Um, so yeah, just bring Doctor Doom, Clairvoyant. Um, there's not that many good counters for this fight, honestly. Uh, I mean, I guess you could just don't bring a power gain buff and then just play around. I, I like Dr. Doom mostly because he's immune to armor break, so he can't get um, cold snapped by Vision Arcus. So, yeah, that's um, quest three done. There are three super cheese paths on this quest that you can do. We got stun vulnerability, we got the gimme, and we got the 900% special attack damage. So, yeah, super easy quest. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed part three, 7.1.3. Um, and yeah, see you guys in the next one. Peace.